Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd in the Street and today we're taking a look at the Symphedum personal database software. Okay everyone, years ago I was a huge fan of Mac OS. Back when I was a kid, I never owned a Mac, but I always really loved Macs. I had an iPod Touch, and so I was really interested in software that was available for iOS, iPhone OS at the time, and for Macs. Now there was a database software for Macs that was created by a company called FileMaker. You might have heard of it. And the database software was called Bento. Now in case you're wondering what a database software is and what it would do for you, I've made a few videos in the past about LibreOffice Base. That's a database management program that's included in the LibreOffice Office Suite, and it's similar to Microsoft Access. It lets you build databases, and you can build forms with those databases to make it easier to input data. And databases obviously let you sort your information. They let you structure it however you'd like. However, as I made apparent in my videos about LibreOffice Base, Base and Access aren't the easiest programs to use. They're definitely doable if you've got a big project that you need a database for, but it's not quick and easy to just sit down and make a really great LibreOffice Base database. Likewise, on Mac OS, there's a program called FileMaker that lets you do something very similar, but FileMaker is a little bit more difficult to use. Binto was very, very easy to use, and that's what set it apart. It was extremely simple. Basically, you opened up the program and you dragged and dropped form inputs into your database and you were able to start typing into them as soon as you dropped one onto your form. That ease of use made it extremely powerful and extremely easy for lots of people to use. Now unfortunately FileMaker discontinued Bento at a certain point in time and I remember because I had Bento on my iPod Touch. It was one of my favorite apps on my iPod was just a database program. But they discontinued Bento for iOS and they also discontinued Bento for Mac OS. And I was really disappointed because I never even got to really use it on Mac OS since I didn't have a Mac at the time. So fast forward many years later, and here we are, I'm a Linux guy, and recently I wanted to make a database. I was moving all of my belongings out of one house and into this apartment that I'm in now, and I wanted to keep track of everything that I was putting into boxes so that I would remember which box everything was in when I needed to go and find it later. And I thought, man, you know, Bento would have been great for this because I didn't wanna sit down and spend half an hour or an hour creating a structured database and then have to spend five minutes inputting every single item into the database. I just wanted something quick and easy. And I did a little bit of web searching and I found a program called Symphedum. And I was extremely impressed the instant I installed it. Symphedum is basically a Bento clone, but it's open source, so it's for all platforms, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. It is being actively developed on GitHub. It's not super active, but there have been changes made just within the last month relating to the snap packaging for the program. I've got it installed on Arch Linux just through the AUR, and this program is so simple that it's almost easier to show you what it does rather than telling you. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and cut to the desktop and show you this incredibly powerful personal database software. All right guys, and here we are on the desktop. Now the first thing I wanna show you is Symphedum's official web page, which is the author's GitHub page. I will put this link in the description so you can find it if you'd like to. You can see if I click this git.io link, it redirects to the exact same page. So this is the, the most official page we've got here. Symphedum is written in Qt, which I really, really like. You can see it's tagged with C++. And as I was saying, there have been some commits in the past few months fixing compiler warnings, doing hot fixes, and updating the program's snap builds. And I really like that this software is not abandoned yet because even though open source software is often useful long after the developer stops caring about it, it's still a nice peace of mind to know that updates are still being made. So you can see they describe Symphedum as a personal database software for everyone who desires to manage and organize data in an easy and intuitive way. And I can certainly vouch for this. It is easy and it is intuitive. It is almost exactly like Binto, like I was saying earlier. So you can visit this page and scroll through all of the different features. You can see the developer is actually a macOS user. Either that or this is a really, really good macOS theme for Linux. 
Um, and down here you can see some Windows screenshots as well. If you're on Windows, you don't even have to install anything. You can just download a zip file and run it. Mac OS, there's a DMG available, which is great. You don't have to go through the App Store. And then on Linux, there is an Ubuntu Deb, there is an Arch Linux AUR package, there is an app image, which I love app images. And if you are a Snap user, which I am not, you can find it in the Snap Store as well, or you can build it yourself like you can with any open source software. And it is free software as well. It's licensed under the BSD2 clause license. So not copy lefted super strongly, but it is free, freedom respecting. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and open up some freedom. And here it is running on my system. Now you can see I have my storage inventory database open. And what I was doing here was I just made an extremely simple database with three columns. And those columns are a short description of the item that I was logging, the container that I put it in, and I plugged in a webcam to my desktop and I was taking a picture of each item just in case I wanted to make sure before I dug something up from a box that it was actually the thing I was looking for. Now rather than scrolling you through all of my personal belongings and boxes here, I'm going to start the video off by making a new collection. Now you can see right here there is a bit of a graphical glitch going on and that's because I'm using a dark theme here on KDE Plasma. Unfortunately, I was trying to force some freedom to use a light theme because I was having this issue, but I was unable to do so. Qt doesn't make it super easy to force a theme for a specific program. You can change the widget theme of a program on runtime, but it's hard to change the color scheme. So bear with me here with this super light text on a light background for a second. But after we create our new collection, which is your database, they call it a collection in this program, we can name it over here. I'll just call it my test database. And like I said, I know this is hard to read, but what it says here is get ready. Your two options are to add a field in your empty collection so you can begin to add new records. And now you're ready. Start by adding new records to your empty collection. So what you want to do here is come up here to the top bar. And this is ready for us to start building our database. So let's say that you want, let's say just a, a simple contact book. You want to keep track of your contacts. Let's build a contact book. These three buttons here are for records, rows in your table, and these three items here are for fields or columns in your database. So to add a new field to our database, we're going to click the green plus button right here. You can see we've got a create field wizard that comes up, and we've got all kinds of different fields that we can add. So we're going to choose a text field for this first item. Since this is a contact book, we obviously need the contact name. I'll click next and you can select whether or not this field is required for every item in your database or not. We're going to require this one since every contact has to have a name, I would imagine. We'll click finish. So now that we've done that, we can come up here to the records section and click the green plus there. And now we have our first record and the whole program looks a lot better now. So we're going to type in a name here. I'll start with myself, Jacob Kaufman. And once again, there was a little bit of a, a glitch there with the dark theme, but when I click out of the box, now we can highlight this text and it looks normal with my dark theme. So contact name is Jacob Kaufman. I can come up here and add a new contact and let's call it Adam Herrera. I'm going to use Nerd on the Street personnel for this video. We'll add a third one called Michael Cheneau. So I'm adding these records, and after I've added a few, I can come up to the top right here and use these arrows to just flip through my different records. And you can see we're switching between the different records that we have. Now at any time, I can also come up here to the top, and we're currently in form view, but I can view this database in a regular old table view if I want to see a list of just all of the entries we have. And that's super handy once your, your database starts getting very large. We can switch over to table view to quickly find items, and then we can even switch which item we're looking at in table view, and then switch it back to form view to view it in the pretty format. So I'm going to create another field here, and this one's going to be a number, and I'm going to set the field name to phone number. Now I'm obviously not going to be typing everyone's phone numbers in here, I'll just use fake numbers. We will not set this to required because maybe not everyone has a phone number. We have an option here in Symfetum to show negative numbers in red, which would be helpful if you're doing budgeting. Not going to be super useful for phone numbers, so we'll leave that turned off. We'll leave the notation to automatic, and we'll click finish. So now I can come in here and set my own phone number to 314-111-1234. And this number field, I probably should have used a text field here because the number field, you can see that number saves, but if we try and put a dash in here and we click out of it, it won't save that because a dash is not a number. But I'm just demonstrating the different types of fields here, so we'll keep the number type. We can flip over to Adam and set his phone number to 314-111-1235. 
and we can also set a value for Michael Cheneau back here. Now we can flip through our three records, and you can see the fields both change when we flip between items in our database. And we can also, like I said, go back to table view and just view the entire thing. Going back to the form, I'm going to add just a couple more fields here. We'll add an email address, email address. And I'm also going to add an image. And I think it's really cool that you can add images into the software now. One thing the software does not have integrated right now is the ability to take a picture within the software. You have to take the picture with another program and then you can drag and drop it right in here. Or you can select a file from your machine. And the drag and drop is very easy to use. One thing I would like to see in the future is the ability to, if you've got a webcam plugged in, to just take a picture. But we're going to select profile picture right here and we'll click finish and now we have a place for an image on our form. Now let's say I want to start rearranging things in our form here. I'm going to type in my email address jacob at nerdonthestreet.com. You can see the email address is longer than the text box so I want the text box to be a bit longer. It's super easy all I have to do is click on the email address header there and then I get this box around the entire field. I can select the right side of that and just drag it out and you can see I just made it twice as long. The forms are limited to a sort of grid layout, so it's not super incremental. You, you can basically make this a column bigger at a time, which honestly is perfectly fine, and it keeps the form easy to manage anyway. I can also move things around. I can drag and drop our phone number up here, and you can see Symfetum automatically rearranges form items to keep everything compacted in. And in some software, I would find that kind of annoying, but in this software, like I said, this entire thing is just supposed to be simple and easy to use and easy to look at, and it makes that really easy to do with these features. I'm also going to make our picture a bit bigger. We'll make it wider as well as taller. And now I've got a folder here on my system with pictures of the three people I've added to this database. And like I said before, I can just drag and drop these in. So I've got jacob.jpg here. I'm on my Jacob entry in my database here. I'm just going to drag and drop this photo right onto the photo section. And now this picture is part of my database. It could not be any easier than that. Um, I can flip over to Adam. I'll add his email address, adam at nerdonthestreet.com. And I will add his picture here from his Twitter profile. And then I'll flip over here and add Michael at nerdonthestreet.com and I've got a picture of him clipped from a video here I can just drag in. And in just a few minutes we've created an entirely custom contact book with really nice formatting and pictures and everything. There's only three items right now but if we had more we could go to the table view and you know scroll through them all. This also has searching so if I come up here to the search box in the top right I can type in Michael and you can see the search, it flips you over to table view so you can see the search results. But then we can select that search result and go back to form and it highlights the things that we matched our search on, which is awesome. I can clear out that search and we'll go back to that form. So that's really great. Hopefully you're getting an idea of what this program is good for. And it's, it's not always something you can just sit down and you know, oh, I wanna make a database. I don't really know what it's gonna be about, but I just wanna make a database. You don't say that very often, but there will be a time when you're just thinking, man, I've got information, I need to organize it. I wish there was an easier way to do this than an Excel spreadsheet and having to you know, keep everything formatted properly myself or make a, a, a Microsoft Access or LibreOffice base database and have to go through all of that work, creating your database, creating the forms, setting all the formatting up. Symfetum is so much quicker just to get simple databases like this built. Now, like I said, this program is still being actively developed, but sometimes you do need to get your data out of a program for one reason or another, and there are some ways we can do that. If we go up to the top right here and click our file menu, you can see we have options to create a new collection, record, or field. We also have a backup option, and this is great for if you want to move your database from Symfetum on one computer to Symfetum on another computer, or even if you just want to back it up. We can open up this wizard and you can see we can create or restore a backup. We're going to create a backup. It contains all your data including all files. We can click next here and you can see it's going to save it in a .syb format. I'm going to save it in the same folder that I had those pictures in just for simplicity and we'll click backup and you can see backup completed successfully. So now if we come into that folder again, we've got this backup here that I left at the default name of the date and time. And it's about 20 megabytes. It includes the database itself and most of the text in here is stored in a single database file on our system. 
the pictures are stored separately from one another and linked into the database file. But all of that is wrapped up nicely in this .syb file, so I'm actually going to delete this test database right now. And it brings us back to our storage inventory database. And at this point, I'm going to come up to file and I'm going to click backup again. And I'm going to choose to restore a backup. And I'm going to select that file right here. I click restore and you can see it says backup restored successfully. So I'll click finish. It's telling us to restart some Fedom. So after we do that, we can see our test database is right back here with all of our information still in it. We can expand these columns out to have the formatting the way we did before, but the form formatting is exactly the same as it was before, and that was super easy. If you do want to export this data to another program, you can also do that. If we go to File and go to Export, we can export this database to a CSV, and we're going to choose to export all records in our database. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values. You'll be able to open this up in LibreOffice Calc or a lot of database software as well. Calc is spreadsheet software. We'll leave the text encoding and the field separator to the defaults, and we'll click Export. We'll select that same folder and give it a name here. I'll call it export.csv. And now if we open up that folder, we can see we've got export.csv. I can open that up in LibreOffice. And you can see here it's, it's letting me know what it's about to import. I can click OK and LibreOffice Calc opens up with my three records right here. Now you can see, like I said, what we just exported was the actual database file. So that includes the names of the pictures. It does not include the pictures themselves, but all other fields that are made up of text were exported. And likewise, we can come in here and import that same database right back in here. CSV format, we'll call it imported collection and we will select export.csv that we created. And now we've got imported collection, and you can see this one, since it's just that text data, it did not save our form layout, and it also did not save the pictures, once again, just the names of the pictures. So like I said, if you're wanting to move a database between different computers still using the same program, definitely use the backup feature. If you're wanting to export your text data to another program, you can use import and export. Both are extremely handy to have. And finally, just a few more features that this program has. We can come up here. There's a full screen view that I won't show you right now because it would go way outside of my screen recording boundaries, but if you want to present your database, you can do that in full screen. We can hide our collection sidebar to get a bigger view of our form. Under tools, there are also a couple more cool things. There is a cloud synchronization option. So if you do want to use some Fedom on multiple computers at the same time, you can do that sort of automatically without having to always go and manually back up and restore your database. Now the cloud services that are built in right now are Dropbox and Mega. Both of these are hosted services. You're paying a company, either Dropbox or Mega, to store your files for you. I would love to see Nextcloud added into this cloud services tool as an option so that you can sync your data and still be in control of it. But still, it's really nice that at least it's got this framework built in to sync with the cloud. And really, long term, I'd love to see something like Symphedum for Android and iOS. Because like I said, I used Bento on my iPod Touch and I could see a huge value in being able to, let's say, add people to my contact book from my phone and then get back to my computer and be able to look at it. And with a contact book, there are tons of contact applications out there. But for something more custom, something like my, my storage inventory here, you know, it'd be great if I could just walk around my house with my phone, take pictures of everything, put it into my database, and then come back to my computer and be able to search through it here in Symphedum. I know making a mobile application is a lot of work, so I'm not expecting that anytime soon, but Nextcloud for cloud synchronization would be really great. Aside from that though, we do have the option to open a cloud database in read-only mode, and actually what this does is it makes it so that we're the only one who can write, and all the other clients would be in read-only mode. So if you're editing your database and you want to lock it for the cloud, while you're editing, you can do that really easily right here. If we come down to preferences, you can see we have the option when to check for our updates. This is our, our database directory. And if we actually navigate to that directory, you'll see here we've got data.db. And this is an SQLite 3 database. We can actually open that up. Well, I've got, a, I've got a database browser installed. So all of your Symphedum collections are actually organized in the same data.db file on your file system. And then when you back one up or export it, then it pulls out just that collections data into your export file. But if we click on collections here and we uh, go to browse data, you can see my, my three different collections of data here. So there is a bit of abstraction here with Symphedum, and this is what I'm talking about. 
You don't want to have to go into an SQLite data browser every time you want to add an item or search through your database. You know, this is, this is a whole tree structure with all kinds of stuff in it. I like not having to worry about that stuff. I like being able to just go into a program and browse through it nicely here. So that's great. And then here you can see under files, this is where all of our pictures are stored. Like I said, that's not part of the database file. The pictures are stored separately and that's exactly where they're stored in the same folder, which is under .local by default, .local share on Linux. So that's where the backend files are actually stored. We can also set our appearance here. You can change the background color of your database forms. You can change the font size and style and everything. You can also change how tall the rows are if you want to in table view. So you can see these are a bit taller now. I can set that back to one and now they're shorter. There's also a section in your preferences to manage cloud sync that we already talked about. And there's an advanced section where you can reset all settings, which basically just deletes those files that I just showed you. We also have the option to cache images if you'd like, rather than reading them from your file system every time they're up. That would increase RAM usage, but it would make scrolling faster if you want to do that. I'm on an SSD, so I don't mind just reading the files. So that's really it. That's all this program is. That's a lot of functionality in a very simple program. And since this is free software, I would highly recommend just downloading it no matter what operating system you're using and keep it around. Because like I said, this isn't something you're always going to have a use for immediately, but eventually I guarantee if you, if you really understand what this program does and you witness how easy it is to use it, there will be a time when you think, oh, you know what? I need to keep track of some data and Symfetum would be a great way to do that. Because maybe you don't need all of the overhead that comes with a full-fledged database, but you just want something nice and simple to look at. This is incredibly well-made software. There are a few quirks with the dark theme here on KDE Plasma. That's not the program's fault so much as QT's fault, and I'm sure they can be ironed out with time as well. There is a donate button to this application developer in the help menu, and you can see a full list of authors here in the help menu as well. So a huge thanks to all these people for making this program. I really love that this is available. Years ago, I was disappointed when FileMaker discontinued Binto for Mac OS, and now I have a Binto equivalent for Linux, which is even better. So the links will be in the description of this video. Like I said, definitely check that out. If this video was helpful to you, you can join the Nerd Club over at nerdclub.nots.co. For just $3 a month, you can help me showcase free and open source software like Symfetum. We're coming up on seven years as of this month that I've been making videos about free and open software. I'd really love if we could get a little bit closer to some of our goals on Patreon. So nerdclub.nots.co, check that out. And for now, that's everything I had to talk about in this video. So I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd of the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.